Safety on the launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, Florida now. That is the shuttle Discovery with its secret military payload. Now less than a minute to lift off today in a con confusing and controversial decision on whether or not the military and NASA would let anyone know just when liftoff would take place. But then in the last 24 hours or so, they decided to let us see the liftoff and to give us an idea of when it might, may occur. T-minus 31 seconds, and we're gone for auto sequence start. T-minus 25 seconds. The sequence around the orbiter now controlling the final seconds of the countdown. The body flap and speed brake are in launch position. T-minus 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, we have main engine start, four, three, two, one, ignition, and liftoff. Liftoff of Discovery, the first flight, totally dedicated to Department of Defense mission. And it's cleared the tower. Tower clear. The vehicle now turning around to the proper azimuth. Go down track on this flight. A spectacular day over Florida. The flight had been delayed by 24 hours because of the freezing temperatures, and they were worried that the ice at the base of the rocket would damage in some way those fragile instruments there and possibly damage the heat protection tiles that are on the space shuttle we're so familiar with by now. Five-man crew, all members of the military, four regular astronauts, and then an engineering specialist from the Air Force aboard the space shuttle as well. Very few details about this flight have been released. We expect, however, that it may be up there for about four days. The military continues to treat this as a secret, but as you can see, it is an open secret. Through congressional testimony and articles that have been written in trade publications, we know by now that NASA and the military is preparing to launch a new and very sophisticated spy satellite. What will happen is, if all goes well, is that the shuttle will get up there and then launch from its payload bay a rocket-propelled satellite with a two-stage rocket attached to it. The second rocket will lift it into a what is called a geostationary orbit of about 22,300 miles that means it will stay in place as the Earth turns somewhere over the equator. It has two very large receivers and transmitters on it. One is a kind of an ear, and we're told that it can pick up the most minute electronic signals in the Soviet Union. Now we have separation of the solid rockets. Right on schedule. Always a spectacular sight. The big uh, external tank then, that kind of rust brown fueling tank will break up and fall away and momentarily. Normal, uh, separation of the solid rocket boosters. Pentagon intelligence sources, by the way, say that there are no Russian spy ships in international waters off the Cape. They need not be there. They can watch all of this on television. The idea was to make it as difficult as possible for the Soviet Union to know about uh, to know about this launch and just when it may occur, but now here we have it on national television. Fred Francis, who has been very close to this story from the beginning, is at the Pentagon with us this afternoon. Fred, are they continuing to say there at the Defense Department that this is a secret? Oh, yes, Tom. Uh, the very essence of the Air Force's space program or its spy program, and more particularly the CIA and the NSA and the National Reconnaissance Office space-based espionage system is grounded in secrecy. The, the very, the very uh, mention of the National Reconnaissance Office is a secret in itself. Uh, what we have here, Tom, is a, is a new generation of spy satellite, something uh, for the 1990s. Extremely large, as you said. Uh, when, it, when it folds out, when its wings fold all the way out, it will stretch over 100 feet. 
uh, what the what the Pentagon was concerned about, what they said, we don't want to tell you uh, when it's going up. We don't want the Soviets to know it's azimuth, it's launch. What they were concerned about was that the Soviets would be able to track it to its position 22,300 miles up in space. It may be difficult for the Soviets, it may not be difficult for the Soviets to track it, but it may be difficult for the Soviets to find it because this new sophisticated satellite can relocate itself as we understand it. And um, by the way, its code name is reportedly Aquacade. And uh, that too is, uh, is supposedly classified, but it's been printed in the technical journals and in several other publications. And Fred, uh, the fact of the matter is, it's not just a launch that uh, must be maintained uh, a secret, and of course that's well known by now. But I suppose that the crucial thing from the Air Force point of view is when they launch, once they're in space, when they launch in fact, the spy satellite itself from the payload bay. Uh, yes, Tom, it, the Soviets will not have great ease in finding this thing. We do not believe that the Soviet system of space optics, its telescopes to see up into space, are as good as uh, the United States. So, so just where it is and how it launches up, uh, they want to keep secret and they will keep it a secret. The Soviets may not find this thing right away. In fact, they may not find it for quite a while. The first satellite like this, the Ryolite series, launched in 1970s, the Soviets did not know it was up there until some American spies sold the secrets. All right. At the, uh, at the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, is Robert Bazell, who has been following all of this for the past two or three days now. Bob, at the last moment, we did uh, see pretty much what we wanted to. Well, it was a beautiful sight, Tom. Just before you came to me right now, I was looking up in the sky in five minutes and 100 miles downrange. I could still see the rockets with my naked eye. There's not a cloud in the sky here at the Kennedy Space Center. It was a gorgeous liftoff no matter what that payload carried. Tell me about the NASA officials who in the past have always been so open about all of this. Now they're operating under new constraints imposed on them principally by their customer the military, are they feeling a little silly about it all? Yeah, it was very tough because this business of uh, announcing the last nine minutes seemed a little silly to everybody who was involved in the space program. And it's, it's a big change. Since the early days of Mercury, this has been a very open adventure, man in space, and now that's changing. Thank you very much. Robert Bazell at the Kennedy Space Center, a successful launch today of Disco Discovery, the space shuttle on its third flight, this time carrying a secret military payload that consists of a new, sophisticated American military satellite spy. We'll have further details tonight on NBC Nightly News. I'm Tom Brokaw. For now, good afternoon from all of us at NBC News. Two, one, ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Discovery, the first flight totally dedicated to Department of Defense mission. And it's cleared the tower. This has been an NBC News report.